What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we're going to be taking a look at, well, the top 10 most exciting cards from the upcoming War for Cybertron Siege expansion of the Transformers trading card game. These are not the best cards from Wave 3. Wave 3 is out well, today, tomorrow, depends when I upload it really, but it's out this weekend. It comes out on Friday the 28th. We don't know what the best cards are, and anyone that tells you they do know what the best cards are, are really making a prediction. So what I thought we would do instead is have a look at the most exciting cards from Wave 3, the one that I am super psyched to go and start making decks with, testing, etc. I feel good about the 10 on the list, I do not feel particularly good about the order. You could chuck it all over the place. No, I do feel good about the 10. So, if you've got any amendments, stick them down in the comments. So, do remember, if you're putting a card up, you've got to bring another card down in its place. If you're bringing a card down, you've got to put another card up in its place. And, of course, if you want to put your own top 10 list in the comment section, well, I would be frankly delighted to have a read. So starting off then, at number 10, we've got Captain Starscream. Now it is a 12 cost, which is quite expensive, means it's going to be essentially half your deck. And the stats are pretty good, attack of 6, health of 16 stand out. What we like here is that it's just got a bit of cheeky damage. In bot mode, when an upgrade is scrapped from an enemy, you do 1 damage to that enemy. And when you flip to alt mode, you do one damage to an enemy that has no upgrades. Now, it is fairly situational. You only get it in bot mode when you scrap an upgrade. So if you find something like Vaporize, that's fine. But even if you're playing Vaporize, you might not be able to draw into it at the right time. Although, to be fair, Bashing Shield does have a green icon, so you'll be able to find it. But having said that, that only scraps an armor. It doesn't scrap whatever you want which is a bit of a pain. In alt mode, yeah, you get to do an extra damage, but only when they've got no upgrades. I do like the idea of combining this with the Starscream from Wave 2, King Starscream as it were, and they will make a very nice 25-star deck, certainly one I'm going to be throwing some ideas around for. In at number 9, and I'm a little bit biased because I revealed this one, but we've got Captain Ironhide. And I'm sure not everyone will agree with me here, but I'm cool with it, to be honest with you. It's a 9 cost, making it cheaper than a bunch of cards on this list, meaning it's a bit more techable into some decks. You've got a bit more space to play around with, so to speak. And the stats are pretty average across the board. I suppose you've got an attack of 5, which is alright. But really here, I love both the skills. In bot mode, when you attack and you've got a weapon, you may swap that weapon with a blue weapon from your hand. Something like Energon Axe, for instance. Oh no, I've not got a damage character. I can't attach it to Ironhide. He's not damaged. But then when you go to attack, you are damaged. At which point, yay! Now I can rock and roll and pop the Energon Axe on there. There are so many different combos we can play around with here. And sure, there are some weapons that you can't use. But there's a whole bunch you can and there's only going to be more in the future. Then you flick into alt mode and you cannot take non-attack damage from your opponent's cards. If you've, and we've already seen Starscream, there's going to be a bunch of others on this list. If you're playing against a deck that does rely on cheeky damage, this essentially just gives you an answer to it. And okay, you're not the beefiest character ever, but Defensive 2, Half of 12 will stick around, and they cannot use cheeky damage. They've got to go after you the old-fashioned way. In at number 8, Captain Alita 1. Now, this is a really weird one for me, because it's a 12-cost character, which is rather expensive, and I like it for when it gets KO'd. Now, in terms of stats, the defense of 0 is horrible, but attack of 6 is great, health of 17 is great, so there are decent stats here. But when you're KO'd, you scrap the top card of your deck, you may play it, then scrap another card from the top of your deck, you may play it. And if that interaction sounds familiar, it should. It's Leap of Faith, which is so good, it's a star card. 
And if you hit Leap of Faith, you get to play even more cards. I really like Leap of Faith as a card, and I love that this gives you Leap of Faith. I'm a little bit reticent about the fact that you basically get the most value out of this when it's KO'd, and being a 12-star character, it's going to be basically half of your deck, which does give me a little bit of pause. What I do love here is a combo with I Still Function, whereby you bring it back with I Still Function, you get to use her for a turn, and then she gets KO'd, and you get the skill again. I really do like that. Incidentally, when you flip it into alt mode, move any number of damage counters from one of your other characters to this. You cannot KO doing this, though it does do a bit of healing. So essentially, you play this with a big character you don't want to lose, and you engineer it so Alita is the one that goes down and gets the good skill. Although this really pales in comparison to Wave 1 Sludge, because Wave 1 Sludge can move from all of your Dinobots and can move enough to KO. In at number 7, we've got Sergeant Cog, the only Battlemaster, although it's technically a weaponizer, which is important because Quartermaster can only be used for Battlemasters, and although this is functionally the same as a Battlemaster, it's not a Battlemaster, and therefore you cannot use Quartermaster, that's pretty gosh darned important. And... There's no Micromasters on the list. This is the only little card I'm putting on the list. Let's hope it lives up to it. Now, the first thing to notice here, right, it's a 10-cost Battlemaster Weaponizer with no skill in bot mode and average stats with slightly below average defense. Four attack, 12 health, one defense. We'd expect that on an eight or nine character which had skills. So frankly, the bot mode here just doesn't impress us at all. But it is a Battlemaster weaponizer, which means that we can, when it gets KO'd, attach it to one of our characters as an upgrade. And the first thing to note when you attach it as an upgrade, plus four attack. That's grenade launcher territory. And Grenade Launcher is so gosh darn good, it falls off at the end of your turn. So the plus four attack alone is pretty sweet, although not sweet enough to justify paying 10 stars. But then when you attach it, you draw a card for each character you have on the battlefield, then play an upgrade onto each of your characters. Now with Cog being a 10 cost, the reality is you're looking at two or three characters... But then you're looking at essentially a plus four attack and you draw two cards and you get to attach two extra upgrades in addition to heavy force defense breaker cannon. That is a battle master weaponizer, which does make me think, hang on a second. This is one that is really worth having a bit of a play around with. Although do please remember, and I've said it a couple times, but let's make it clear. You can't use quartermaster here. Because it's not a battle master. In at number seven, Alpha Trion, or as I like to call him, Worse Optimus Prime Battlefield Legend. Now, to be fair, you are only an 11 cost, which does make you cheaper than Optimus Prime Battlefield Legend, but in every other way, it's basically a worse version of it. So, in terms of attack, you max out at 6, whereas Optimus Prime maxes out at 8. And in terms of defense, you've got one less in each mode. Though you do have the same health. In bot mode, after you flip battle cards for attack and before the defense flips, you may play one of the blue actions you flipped. But Optimus Prime can play any of the actions, blue or otherwise. And when you flip it into alt mode, you may return an orange action from your scrap pile to your hand, whereas Optimus Prime can return any action. You do have opposite traits, in that Optimus Prime is ranged in bot mode, melee in alt, whereas Alpha Trion is melee in bot mode, ranged in alt. But even then, you can just flip to the right mode to attach whatever it is you really want. And honestly, this is two stars cheaper, but it is just worse Optimus Prime. Incidentally, you can play it with Optimus Prime, 
and Optimus Prime has already proven to be hands down the best card we've ever had, in two sets admittedly. I don't know if anyone's going to get crushing with Alpha Try on Optimus Prime, but I think a bunch of people might. I don't like that it is just a worse Optimus Prime in basically every way, but I do like the fact you can play them together. In at number 5, Major Ultra Magnus. He's a big boy, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before the game begins, you actually put a Major Ultra Magnus armor directly onto it, so you actually start with a huge advantage. But it is the only double star card we've got. So, and you don't have to play this incidentally, you can ignore it, but on the one hand you can start with, as soon as you flip into bot mode at least, 8 attack, 17 health, 3 defense, which is huge. On the other hand, it essentially turns it into a 14 star character, which is also huge. But when you attack and you flip at least two orange, two blue, you do one damage to each character. That is yours and your opponent, but it's not going to stop you playing something like Ironhide or Motormaster to prevent that. And then bot mode, you've got Brave, so your opponent has to go after you if they can. If you've only got one tapped character and it isn't Major Ultra Magnus, they still have to go after the only tapped character. And of course, it's got that skill that puts the Major Ultra Magnus armor onto you. It's actually only called Ultra Magnus armor. I just like adding the Major in. I'll be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, this might end up being too expensive to be really viable, especially if you want to play the armor with it as well. But I don't really care. This is one of those characters that makes me look and go, ooh, ooh, that looks fun. And remember... We are looking at the most exciting characters. We are not trying to predict the quote-unquote best characters. Nobody knows that yet. In at number four, General Optimus Prime, who does everything. Now, it's an 11 cost, which does mean it will fit with Optimus Prime Battlefield Legend if that's what you're into. But it's a ranged character in bot mode, melee character in alt mode. It's a leader in both modes while being a truck in alt mode. And in bot mode, it's got bold one and tough one and focus one. In alt mode, it gives each of your characters bold one and tough one. It's just doing everything. Now, we did see at Origins Flame War seeing rather a lot of play because it can give your characters either tough one or bold one. This will give them both. But even if you're not helping out your other characters, you've got bold one, tough one, focus one, above average health, above average attack, and in the other mode, above average defense. You can be a ranged or a melee character. You just do a little bit of everything. I don't think it's necessarily the most stunningly amazing card in the set, but I do think you can put it in a whole bunch of different decks to perform a whole bunch of different roles. It is an 11 cost, which is kind of expensive. Not quite to the same degree as some of the characters on the list, but still fairly expensive. I just think it does so much that there's got to be some love in here for him. In at number three, now this might be my personal favorite in the set. I probably have to iron hide. But I do think it's really exciting. I'm popping in at number three. It's Major Shockwave. Now, the first thing that puts me off about Major Shockwave, it is a 14-star character. That is hyper expensive. But Wave 1 Shockwave is an 11-star character, so you can still play the both of them in a double Shockwave deck. But it earns the 14 stars health of 17 is nuts attack of seven is nuts and you are a specialist which gives you access to all those specialist tools chief among them field communicator of which i am a huge fan in either mode you can look at the top card of your deck whenever you want which gives you extra information it means you've got more to go on when you're making decisions in bot mode, you can always use the top card of your deck as if it's in your hand, if it's a Decepticon card or a secret action. Remember, Decepticon cards are basically any card that has a Decepticon symbol in it and has the purple border. Think Scoundrel's Blaster, for instance. Now, it's still 
just your upgrade for the turn, your action for the turn, etc. But it means you've essentially always got a hand of one more card, but your opponent cannot discard these like they could. If they play something like a Rapid Ascent, they can discard cards from their hand, from your hand, but they cannot discard cards from the top of your deck. That's awesome. And when you flip to alt mode, you draw a card, and then your opponent scraps a card from their hand. But remember, if you're playing Wave 1 Shockwave, they've then got to take a damage on one of their characters when they discard a card from their hand. I think there's a lot to be said for this. I'm going to be playing around with Double Shockwave, and it might not ever be good, I don't know. But it does excite me. In at number 2, General Megatron. I think General Megatron could end up being a really, really good card. Now, it's a secret rare, so it's going to be hard to pull it. And it is a 13-star character, so it's going to be pretty gosh darn expensive. Though we've got a bunch of other Megatron, which you can pop into a double Megatron deck. Having said that... Do remember that Megatron Living Weapon from Wave 1 is also a 13-star character. So you can combine it with any other Megatron, but you cannot play this and Living Weapon in the same deck. 7 attack is good, 15 health is good, 3 defense is good. But it's the skills that really make me happy. At the start of your turn, if this has 3 or more upgrades, do 1 damage to each enemy. And that's at the start of every one of your turns. So if Megatron is tapped, fine. If you're not going to use Megatron, fine. If Megatron's got one health remaining, fine. As long as Megatron has three or more upgrades, you do one damage to each enemy. That's really good. That's the equivalent of an armed hovercraft. Bearing in mind, this is a ranged character. You can play armed hovercraft as well if you so wish. Yeah, it's kind of cool, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, being a tank, you can play Hunker Down to cheat extra upgrades on. And let's not forget the Wave 2 Megatron Arrogant Ruler, another card I was lucky enough to reveal, which also lets you attach extra upgrades. I think you're going to get this working occasionally. What is annoying is when your opponent plays something like a Vaporize to get rid of one of your upgrades, then it goes to your turn, but you don't have free Boo Hiss, etc. When you flip into alt mode, you do damage to an enemy equal to the number of weapons you have on the battlefield. So you can make this two or three damage quite reliably, which is either Plasma Burst or Bolt of Lightning, which is a star card, and this at least has potential to do an awful lot of cheeky damage. There are a bunch of cheeky damage cards we've got, but certainly when I compare this to something like Starscream that came number 10 on this list, I think Megatron's going to do an awful lot more, and it's only one star more expensive. But in at number one, as I'm sure you've probably guessed because it's not been on the list so far, we've got Major Soundwave. We were all waiting for Soundwave, and I don't know about you, but I was very excited when I saw it. I was not let down. Now, it's an 11-star character, but really, you've got to play it as a deck with Raider Ravage and Raider Laserbeak. 15 health is good, 6 attack is good. It's a specialist, so you got all that stuff like field communicator. In alt mode, it gives each of your spy patrols plus 1 defense. But when you attack in bot mode, you untap each of your spy patrols. That's redonk, ladies and gentlemen. So you attack or use a tap skill with Ravage and Laserbeak. Then you attack with Soundwave, and they untap, and you go again. It kind of turns it into a pseudo 5-wide deck. I mean, I know it's not really a 5-wide deck, but it's not a million miles away. You get to reuse two of your characters every round of turns. I think this is extremely exciting, and it does make me think. And look, you basically got to play it as a deck. I don't think you're playing Soundwave with anything else, but that's all right. Raider Laserbeak has got PS2. And when you tap it, you may play a secret action. Yeah, that, that's extra actions. And when you flip it into alt mode, you draw a card and scrap a card from your hand. That's kind of cool. Raider Ravage. 
When you tap it, you do one damage to an enemy. But if they've got four defense or more, you do two damage. That's cool. So maybe you attack with Laser Beak to get PS2, tap Ravage to do the two damage, then attack with Soundwave so you can do both of those again. I think people are going to have a lot of success with Soundwave. I think it's awesome. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. They are my top 10 most exciting cards from Wave 3. Again, not claiming they're the best or going to be the most successful. I'm claiming that they are the most exciting and the ones I'm most looking forward to playing around with. But as I said at the beginning of the video, I would love to hear what you're excited about. So please do let me know in the comment section. Go nuts, be nice, and if you want to give me a top 10 list, I'll love you for it. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we can talk about Transformers and a whole bunch of other games. But by far the most important thing as always... Look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross and you've been watching Wassy Plays.